So now that we've got all these fish living together, we feed them really well. Level the gravel a little bit. Out of sight, out of mind. Will the USB air pump run one? Yes. Live baby Brian helps quite a bit. The male is staying over here because now it's time to feed. This is the way that I personally enjoy. My last tip is... All right, so promised in a previous video we've already seen, I said I was gonna show you how I breed fish. Now, one of the ways when it's not a live bear, live bear, you kind of set it up, let it do its thing, a lot of cover. In fact, something like this right over here. Tons of cover, get your live bears, you'll see there's tons of babies all around. They can hide from each other. That's a working recipe. But when it comes to things that are egg layers and stuff that's not as easy, if you will, Typically what I like to do is something like this setup where I have a bunch of different species set up in a 75, 55, a 40, whatever it's gonna be. And I just feed them really well. In this tank right now, we've got dwarf platies. We've got Jurapari earth-eating cichlids. We've got whiptail cats that we got from Peru that are undescribed. We've got a bunch of food in there so that everything can eat a ton and just get plump and fat. And then we have this pair of albino crebensis. The male's behind the pot there and the female is in the coconut. Now, we found babies in here a couple of times and the problem is with all the other fish, they get eaten. So in this large community tank that we've got going, babies get eaten. You can see here, the platies are chasing this super fat female and she's gonna drop fry. If I wasn't about to move, I would be setting up a tank or moving them to a pond and letting her go, there's 50 fry and I'm super happy. But I wanna shoot a video because I'm not gonna have a fish room for a couple of months while we're moving and building. So I wanted to make some more videos out of the fish room and one of them is how I select the fish. So now that we've got all these fish living together, we feed them really well and we know stuff's starting to spawn, stuff's getting eaten, that's when we go, hey, Now's the time, we've got a bonded pair, let's start moving some stuff. So we've got this albino crib, male and the female. They've dug a pit a couple of times, they've had babies a couple of times, and we might even find that they have some babies in there now. I don't think so because they both left to go eat, but the male's dug a pit, the female's inside, she, her belly is pink, she's ready to breed again. What I wanna do this time is move them to another tank. And we're gonna show you the basic setup on how to get that done. Doesn't have to be super fancy. A lot of people think like, oh, you gotta do all the plants, you gotta do all the stuff. If you're just trying to breed, most of those tanks are pretty bare bones so that you can keep an eye on what's going on. And so, being that I have a couple tanks free right now, I thought this would be a good opportunity to do this. They were separated out before. So, if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know these Crebenzis were living by themselves basically for a few months. Wasn't getting anything out of them because I was putting food in, and yeah, they'd get some food, but I couldn't feed a lot. And this is one of my tips. When you put a bunch of fish together, you can feed way more food without being afraid that it's gonna rot. So when I had a tank that was a 29 gallon with two fish, I was afraid I'd overfeed. When I have a 75 gallon tank, now with 25 to 30 fish, I feed a lot more. They can eat as much as they want now. And when they do that, now they're ready to breed. So now that they've started breeding, we know they're a compatible pair. We know they're in the mood to do it. And so now we just have to get them away from all the predators. So we're gonna set up a tank to do that. And then we're gonna move them. And then we'll chime in at some point when we get babies or when we hope we get babies because I will be working a lot and they might not get fed every single day, might only be every other day. Um, but once we get some fry, which we've done in the past here, we'll show you that and kind of what it looks like and show you success and how easy it can be, especially a lot of you only have the one tank at home. You might see some breeding behavior, don't know what to do. Set up like another 10 or something and follow the strategy. All right, so now I just gotta build a tank. All right, the height. The trick when you're using the USB air stone or use USB air pump and the never clog air stone is how tight. If you go too tight, the air can't make it through. If you go too loose, it's more of a glug, glug, glug. So you gotta get it just right. So here we've got a 29 that has been stagnant. Nothing has been done to it since we did the background. I'm gonna level the gravel a little bit. It's gonna move gunk. 
This is a well-seasoned aquarium. What does that mean? There's lots of gunk in here. There's bacteria. There's snails. There's, you know, a lot going on. So we don't have to worry about it being cycled. Cycled will handle some fish, sure, but, you know, we want to do more than that. So now I've got a sponge filter. We're going to put that in. This is the one meant, it's like our medium, we call it. And then I also need to put in a glass top. Normally I would clean this, but on camera, we're just gonna leave it dirty for right now. I'm not scared of some algae. For the power of making a video, we'll put that on. The reason why we're putting a glass top back on is we want to make sure that we don't kill our light by bubbling oxygen or air onto it. So now we've got that going. Now we can run this through the back, just like this. So it's through the back. We're gonna connect it to our USB air pump. A lot of people ask, will the USB air pump run one? Yes, but not at a crazy high flow. And then what I do is I go and I hang this. I just hang it right back here on something like this. Now, these are my air system. So yes, am I doing this to show you what can be done? Yes, do I normally do this? No, because I have an air system using our linear air piston pump, which we also sell. But you can see right here, this is the flow from a USB nano air pump. Plenty. If you watched our video, link in the corner, about sponge filters, you will know that this is the right flow. It was almost as if the guy who designed it did that intentionally. Oh wait, that guy's me. I wanted to make sure it could run off a USB air pump because if you can run off that, more air is fine. Less air not as good. So if we can make them really run efficient with a little bit of air, anyone can use these. You can split a big pump down five times, run all five tanks. So it was very crucial to me that we could do that. And it works. It's going to take an hour or two to clear up. We now need to put some structure in here to let the fish breed. Now the fish usually want to cave or to dig under something. We're going to bring over probably both of those. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to temporarily evict them take their coconut hut. We sell these, by the way, if you, if you don't have coconut huts. And I'm going to check just to make sure there's no, like, you know, herd of babies or something. Looks like just some mulm. I'm going to give it a quick shake. A lot of you might say, like, why not take it and clean it off at the sink? When the babies hatch inside this, they're going to go and eat some of that mulm. The parents are going to bring back food and you want to stick in that mulm. So one of the things we're going to do is we're just going to come in here. We're going to put this coconut cave in. Now my advice is to put the cave facing the glass where you can see it, but not facing the rest of the aquarium. So if mom's in here protecting a brood and the male's over here and you have the cave facing that, she has to spend all day going, is he coming back? Is he gonna eat my babies? What's going on? If she looks towards the front or sometimes you can even point it towards the corner, you can see in, I'm gonna make it so I can see in, Here's the hole, and then here's the gravel line. She's gonna dig and cover up most of that hole so only she can fit in it. So she's gonna go in, he's gonna follow, she's gonna lay eggs, he's gonna fertilize them, she's gonna kick them out. Then she's gonna fill in that hole so he can't get back in, so she's safe. She wants to feel safe. What also happens is sometimes if she sees the male all the time, she beats up on him, going, you gotta get away, you're gonna eat my baby. So you gotta give a hide for the male. The male doesn't wanna be in a cave. Out of sight, out of mind. So we already turned the cave away from the rest of the tank. Now we're gonna grab one of these potted plants. You can see the female had took, um, you know, resonance up underneath there temporarily. And this is just a java fern that we put in our own potter. Hopefully these are now for sale. If not, they'll be out real soon. Uh, but now we're gonna put this in and we're just gonna put it on the other side of the sponge filter. As easy as that. He'll dig in and make a cave underneath if he wants. If you don't put another piece of decor in, he's just gonna dig and throw sand on your sponge filter, which is okay. But if you need to do any maintenance, you're gonna be disrupting his home. So I find that this is kind of what you want when you spawn fish. You've got a female with some fry over here looking this way. You've got a male that can hide over there. They got plenty of space to separate. And then you just go back, you clean up the tank a little bit and you move in the fish. 
and feed them really well. Live baby brine helps quite a bit. Aquarium co-op towel is proven to help fish breed, just so you know. You know, they should have enough food, so I would expect them to see babies within the next seven to 10 days. That means I gotta have Jimmy come back in seven to 10 days, get that B-roll footage. So he's gonna overlay that kind of stuff. If you never see that footage, this video probably ne never saw the light of day. So this will be the, the dual hand thing here where you, you make them, so you set a trap. We're gonna set the trap with the net. And then you go, oh, look out, big scary hand coming in. And then they go right behind your net like that. But again, big scary net or big scary hand. And we've got a whole video on how to catch fish and how to not do it too stressfully. And you can sort fish like, you know, I'm getting the flake and the sand out. So that's the male, relatively low impact on this fish. We'll put it in, let him get his bearing. Go on in, there you go. See, relatively, you're noticing not super erratic movements, not scared, not totally fighting the net. Those are all things that are gonna keep the stress level low so that they will breed in the next seven to 10 days. If I had ripped up this whole aquarium, chased them, chased them, chased them for an hour and a half, now we're looking at another month or more to get them to breed, so. Now we just lift them out slowly, we move the female over, and I would wager that she's gonna go find a home in the next 10 minutes or so. She'll get her bearings in there. And just because we built her a good coconut cave doesn't mean she won't take up residence under the, under the pot instead, but that's fine. You know, they, they know better than we do. We just give them some options. But I wouldn't be surprised to see that when we do see Fry in here that they're living in the coconut cave. <laughs> All right, so it's the next day. There's no video trickery or anything like that. And the fish have done what I thought they would do. I actually thought it might take a couple days, but it happened to be the next day, which is great because Jimmy and I were already filming and our Crebenzis have led their fry to the other side of the aquarium. We have spooked them, so now they're picking them up in their mouth and putting them back by the, the easy planter there. But they're leading them around looking for food, so we're gonna give them some food because that's what they're looking to do. They may or may not be ready to eat today, but today is the first day we should start. We should at least keep those parents fed so they don't eat Crebenzis snacks. So I harvested a lot of shrimp. Brian shrimp that is, and uh, I'm gonna feed these guys. You can watch our video on how to do that. So you kind of try to get it towards them. You don't have to, but I try to kind of saturate it so they don't have to swim far. And then you get to enjoy buttery B-roll of them eating. Now you can see, I had talked about aggression between the female and the male a long time ago. The male is staying over here because now it's time to feed. He's kind of watching the cave, but also you might watch her chase him away. Like don't eat their food. You know, they're their chicken nuggets. So I don't know if the fry are quite big enough to be eaten yet, but it looks like they might. And now all we have to do is hatch out baby brine for the next week or so. And you could do crushed up flake and stuff, but this really will maximize your yield. And, uh, you know, truth be told, when you buy brine shrimp, you'll be buying it from me and that makes you money and that's great. But they will eat a variety of things. But this is a great learning experience for when you move on to things that are a little bit harder that won't just start. You know, if you were doing rams instead of uh, cribs, you'd have to, you have to start them out on, on uh, baby brine. So if you get the process down, now you know, Oh yeah, you let them shack up in a larger aquarium. I move them to a smaller aquarium. Then I get them to spawn. Then I feed them brine shrimp. And then I enjoy the fruits of my labor. So that's how I breed fish. And uh, I found it to be very fun and successful for me. There's more efficient ways. There's other ways to do it. This is the way that I personally enjoy. My last tip is make sure you're using a sponge filter or if you have a hang on back, a sponge on that you know, big sponge on that hang back. Otherwise, your filter is just gonna suck up all this brine.
just like it would suck up all the babies. And two or three days later, after the parents moved the fry, you'd be like, where'd they go? Oh my God, they got shredded. I speak from personal experience when I was a new hobbyist. So, you know, there's probably things we've glossed over, try to pick up tips and tricks and just what you've seen behind the scenes. And uh, good luck. Kerbenzis, real fun one. Albinos, easy to sex. Normal ones too, but albinos are even easier. Cheap fish, you know, you can probably get a pair for 10, 12 bucks and get your uh, feet wet when it comes to breeding. Don't you love it when there's a giveaway that's actually hassle-free? So do we. So we're gonna give away five care packages every week just because we wanna give back. All you have to do, be a subscriber, hit the like button, and leave a comment. From there, our app will do the rest. We'll send those packages out anywhere in the world, no matter how much it costs us, and we're gonna do it every week. So the sooner you become a subscriber and you participate, the more chance you'll have to win. Good luck, and for more details, check out the description down below.